Okay, so this is week five, and this recording is for EST204 D01, and this week we'll cover insulation. What is the benefit of adding insulation? When do we add insulation? Types of insulation that are there, and how do you retrofit old houses? It's going to be a very expensive subject because if you want to qualify for mass sale to upgrade your boiler or get on the eBay, they will want you to insulate the house. There is no point in putting a new boiler in a house that's leaking. If the house is leaking a lot of uh, a lot of the heat, you're basically heating the town. It's uh, and you're paying for it. There are uh, there's uh, somebody who was trying to get uh, mass sale to pay for a gas furnace and they found out the gas bill for that place is almost a thousand a month because the house was so big with a lot of holes in it and it's very inefficient to heat that place. So basically we're gonna just give you money, give you money to put a boiler so you can just dump heat into that environment. That's not what we want. So before that you have to do some proper insulation and this area is full of old houses that are in good shape but the consideration for insulation back in the days are not the same as now. Remember when the gas was cheap and we were just dumping energy into things, we did not think about that at that time. And uh, we didn't know about like the greenhouse gases and all this kind of stuff that now we're just finding it's really not uh, ideal. So insulation is really important. Uh, what type of insulation do we have? Recognize facing and barriers. What do you guys do? Uh, does anybody know what, what is facing or barriers? Yes, yes, yeah. It's a, it's a kind of it's a, it's a barrier for the moisture, so it will it will come from outside to inside, and vice versa as well. Explain the options available for retrofitting insulation. List the best practices in insulating new construction. Okay, so insulation three to six times the heat loss than infiltration is losing heat through walls. Insulation reduces transmission losses by increasing the R value in the old equation. And one of the homes I did ask you about that, and if you look at the old equation, it's uh, area times U times delta T. I would say U is one over R total. And the, so, in another sense, if you're a little bit mathematically inclined, A, times delta T over R. It's another form of this equation. Because this also means area times one over R times delta T. Don't let the math scare you. Just by looking at that, as a ratio. The bigger the R, if I increase the resistance, what happens to the heat transfer? Increase or decrease? Decrease. This, huh? Decrease. Decrease. So the more you increase the resistance, <coughs> you will decrease the, so if this goes up, this goes down. And that's what we want, right? We want to decrease the heat loss or heat transfer through the wall. Whether it's uh, heat loss or heat gain. In the summertime, it's also not really good. If you're touching the wall in the summertime and it's really hot, you know you're really gaining a lot of heat. So you gotta do something about that. Otherwise, you're gonna put 12, one ton, two tons, and you get not much cooling. And again, cooling is heat removal. We said heat is the thing, and the anti heat is cold. So we're just basically removing heat with a bucket and putting it outside using a heat pump. Okay, provide uniform temperature through a surface. That's like another benefit of having insulation. You want the surface to be the same temperature, you want cold and hot spots. Prevent winter time condensation. If you have cold spots inside the house, you have condensation. Condensation is not good for you. It's not good for the, uh, for the wall. And uh, insulation also could add structural strength. If you look at this board, this is foam, it's pretty strong. Uh, if you put that into the wall, I think it will make it more soundproof and also give it some kind of rigidity. So it's good really for walls in some cases. So this is another 
R value is relationship with uh, if this is a one and a half inch, this is probably nine point eight. That's how that's pretty good insulation. Uh, usually they put these inside the hollow wood doors like this one. This one I believe is completely empty. So if it's going to the outside, probably I would want to put some insulation in. And we can use these boards. Okay? Uh, also, it will use noise and vibration. Does anybody live next to noisy neighbors? I do. They always did, because they live in apartments. And sometimes, because the wall is empty, it becomes like a, like a what? Like a drum, like a guitar. So you hear, it magnifies the noise, because it's empty inside. So you can hear somebody's walking, somebody's knocking, whatever it is, during the night. And uh, these walls probably are very empty because they're between the uh, same building. So if you live in an apartment complex, chances are they would not, they're not going to insulate between the walls because they didn't have to and because they don't want to add the cost. It's going to be addition to them, so they don't really care about that and you will, you will suffer for that. And also, you can also benefit if your neighbor is turning up the heat, you can just like shut off your heat and you can live off them. So I have neighbors downstairs and they crack up here in the winter. There is no insulation between the first and second floor. I don't turn the heat until February. So I get all the heat for free, but I also get the noise. So <laughs> <laughs> it is, okay, it's a give and take. It's very noisy, but also, yeah, I get free heat. That's, uh, that's awesome. So noise and vibration, that's a really good advantage. And you could also do it later on. If you're moving in a place, the place is done in the 60s, you can pump in some insulation and retrofit that wall. Okay, this uh, is very small, you can see. It's density versus R value. Can you see this problem? Oh, it's very small. I have to magnify this. Let's see if we can see it. So what it's saying here is that uh, it's compared to density. What is density? Volume per mass. Something is dense. It's very heavy, very condensed. A stone is denser than foam. So density and different type of insulation. We have uh, fiberglass over here, cellulose, rock wool, polycyclene, and other material as well. And, uh, and the top is fully neutral, which is really good insulator. And this is the R value. And you notice that the fully neutral, which is what we have here as foam, that is very lightweight, easy to install, and has really high density. So we really like that. So in the, we used to use a lot of cellulose. We, we used a lot of cellulose in the past, and uh, fiberglass. They're okay, but uh, we have better options right now. So look at that. Look at uh, how much is the insulation and the size and the efficiency. Uh, I was doing some research on thermal storage and I was looking at some really the best insulating material ever. I'm probably having the jackets now, you buy one of those fancy jackets. I found this fabric that's uh, you can burn a fire on the other side and you feel nothing. You can put it on, you put your hand on it and you can put a Bunsen burner in the bottom and you feel nothing. It's how much it's insulated. But it's like, it's a hundred dollars per yard square. So probably you have one of those high end jackets that have thin layers. So the smaller with higher insulator, insulation, the better. And if you buy a really fancy jacket, what, what would you find in it that makes it really, really warm? You don't want a poofy jacket, right? Like remember the Gore-Tex one with the big book when you, when you can't move? Yeah, or the, the jacket. Huh? The bubble jacket. Yeah. So those are really warm, but again, it's so huge. So if you can find something, I think North Face. The Columbia, I think, came out with one of those like uh, thin ones. It gives those reflective. Yeah. Uh, but also it's very thin. And it sells, like small cells. Yeah. Like five those, thousand dollars for a jacket. Those uh, fight uh, radiation. But to fight conduction, what are you going to do? 
So for convection, you're going to have non-permeable material, which means like a plastic, like a raincoat. That will fight convection. That's why you, put, you also put the bands, right? Mm -hmm. So the air is, just, is trapped in there. And then for radiation, you put those reflectors. What about for conduction? That when the magic comes. Wool is a really great conductor. And, and it's there, and they try to find something cheap. But of course, we cannot, we cannot go and shear sheep and put it in the wall. That's really expensive. Wool is expensive. Cashmere is more expensive. You know what cashmere is? I, I asked somebody in Scotland to tell me, because I always was confused. So apparently, cashmere is the hair that grows under the neck of a goat, of a sheep. And the reason it's so expensive because somebody has to go and comb that hair out. It's so soft. So cashmere is wool, but it's very, very labor intensive. That's why it's very expensive. A scarf will cost $200. Because somebody has to go there with a comb and comb that sheep every morning and get this little hair. <coughs> so this is the kind of information I ask for. What is cashmere? Can somebody explain to me? And I found somebody actually who has was able to explain it. He was very entertaining with the Scottish accent. Oh, so that's, you get a lamb and you, sh you go and comb it. And you, you comb it, you do not shear it. Because if you shear it, you get like really rough edges. That defies the point. You want to comb it, you get the soft hair. Okay, glass fiber, fiberglass, we had that a lot. It's, uh, it does work. Fiberglass was very common. It's good in Slater. This is made out of uh, some kind of fiberglass. And it's good in Slater, but, uh, if you ever walked with any of these, what happens if you get some of that in your body? <laughs> oh my god, do not forget that. I was working again with the, I have the installation here, the, those reflective blanket with proper glass in them. Yeah, I was working with one and I, I was wearing a, a, a coat. But as I'm working, some of them flow off and get in my body. And then somebody told me to go get take a shower cold shower and got inside more. I spent two days in, 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 in torture. It's so itchy, you can't sleep. So this is some of the insulation. How does it work? It stops the heat to conduct through air, reduce the radiation and convection through cavities, form a bubble wrap and wall. So again, what are the three modes of uh, heat transfer? Okay, so we want to fight through three of those, okay? So look at this little piece of uh, board over there. If you notice, it's reflective. So whatever hits it, will go back. So we fought against radiation. And if you look inside, microscopically into this foam, what is foam? Foam is material with bubbles in it. And bubble is air, okay? It could be something else. So that will fight against conduction. Okay? And what about convection? Well, if I have no fluid here, there's no convection. So the convection is going to be only from the outside in here. So this will give me no convection because it's completely full of material. It's solid. There are some air bubbles inside, microscopically. But they are trapped, they are not moving. And somebody also said last class, if we have wool, it also slow down the air from circulating inside the wool, the, the wool cavity. So again, think of uh, a good jacket and what it's doing. And you want to do the same thing in a house, in a big scale. Uh, and here you see some resistance value for standard wall material. If you look uh, in your H22 at the back, at the end, after the infiltration page at 71, if you go to uh, uh, next to next page 72, there's windows and doors factor. One more, you'll go to 74, and you have walls and bricks. So they are here, and we can check them out at some point. So. This just gives you the idea of what's, uh, how much resistance is there. So starting 2 by 4, 9.7 arc value. 2 by 6, and uh, steel frame, wall, C-stud, 
more material and the insulating concrete form that's 26 to 44. So there's also something called thermal bridging is when you have studs and you have cavity. So you have to add those resistances together. That's why in the, in the, in the book you look at the air values, for example, heat transmission. If you look at the walls, bricks, then you have stucco. What is stucco? I think it's a. Uh, what is stuff? I forgot. I used to know. They used to actually fire the concrete. I don't know. Take the spray on the concrete. Instead of siding and stuff like that. Like yeah, so it has studs and it has sheathing, those studs, yeah. and plywood. Oh, okay. So look, look at this. It has drywall. It said it's cement based siding. Yeah. Correct. You have, two, you have the drywall, you have the vapor seal, cavity insulation, studs 2.4, and plywood, and this is going to be your yield factor for it. So this you, you'll find right off there, right out of the book. Then we have the brick wall, based on the brick sizes, and uh, wood foundation, based on your wall. And also, if you look at your book, at the end, this other book, you'll find some more material. You see? Mm -hmm. If you look at page uh, 278, you see a lot of building material and their insulation. So basically this is giving you the R value and the U value so you can imagine what's, what is going on inside the wall. Okay. We'll move on a little bit. So this is the wall. This is a stucco wall with the R value, siding, sheathing. So you want to put some kind of a barrier so the vapor does not go in and out. And this is drywall from the inside. And steel studs or sometimes two by fours. And this cavity, which is in a lot of cases, by the way, these cavities are empty. There's nothing in them. And uh, my house was built in the 1920. And when they came to do the installation, they, they said, by the way, the walls are empty. There's nothing in them. So they had to do a lot of bone insulation, which is the cheapest way to do it. Thermal bridging. So what, what is meant by thermal bridging is the heat transfer from this stud is going to be faster than the cavity. You agree? Because this is solid steel, steel is no conductor. So you'll see a lot of. Uh, heat loss from the, from the studs than the cavity. That's why some of those studs, they have their own insulation. And that's why they give you the wall factor as combined. They add those resistances in parallel. But we're not gonna deal with that now. We just gotta the wall as is. Okay, common R value per inch, fiberglass, cellulose blown. And I think this is uh, it's gonna be in the homework, so check this out. Wall bats, bats are actually kind of like uh, uh, blankets. Vermiculite or perlite, those are kind of a popcorn material. It's kind of tough and hard. They are really good insulation. And they do put this with the cement. So they mix them with the cement to make the cement more Insulated. And I know in the South America and in hot climate area, they use brick and they put foam inside the brick to insulate. Because brick is really good in storing heat and conducts a lot. That's why we have brick oven. It's really good at storing heat. And that's something you don't want in a house when it's so hot outside trying to cool. Okay? So, water insulation, water filling the airspace. So, this airspace that we depend on for insulation is becoming water now. Water is more conductive than air. You agree? So you don't want that. It could reduce, so water can reduce your uh, insulation value. Water, 
when drops gonna become ice? And what does that do? What does ice do? No. That's true, and what else? Expand. Yeah. Expand. What happens when it expands? You even put a bottle of water in the freezer? It breaks, you even put a bottle of wine in the freezer? Or leave a bottle of wine in your car? It expands and breaks. So it will increase the cracks in concrete. You don't want to have cracks because the water will get in, water will stay in, then it gets too cold, then it will break. One of the problems we face in this area is freezing water. We use hot water to circulate around the house, and if you don't heat the house properly, and we can have a cold spell, all the pipes will burst because they crack. And I was talking yesterday to somebody who bought a a house who that doesn't have an adequate heat system and they have three zones. And he was saying, uh, he just bought the house. He said, uh, well, if it doesn't work, well, I know one, one zone works very well, so I'll just stay in one zone and not, not care about the other. I told him, you, you understand that if the other two places are cold, they will freeze and all the pies will break. He freaked out. <laughs> but yeah, that's something you have to take a <laughs> Take care of now. You can't do that. What, what, what can you do though? Well, you can insulate the pipes from outside. Oh, right. The cheapest thing is if you can insulate the pipes in the basement. Yeah, or not the basement, other room, but second floor, or the other section of the house. What you can do. Uh, the space heater there for that. You could, <laughs> that's very expensive. Space heater, the little one from, for 20 bucks, that, co that runs you at least $3 a day to run it. Yeah. They run what? The little space here, it costs you three dollars to run a day. So in a month, it's going to be like uh, around ninety bucks to run that little. Yeah, yeah. Also, if I just seal all the doors and windows in the other area that he's not using, yeah, at least trap some of that heat. Yeah. Huh? Fix the other two thousand. Yeah. That's one option. That would be the ideal one, right? That's one option. What else? Come on. Get a blower. Huh? That blow the heat around the house. Yeah, but you can get you know, dilute the heat. Yeah. Open up the door so that the other zone can get around. Because then, if you can't... Think a little bit. Throw a coat on there, on the pipe. You could inspect the pipe, yeah, that's a good idea. What else? You are afraid of the water freezing, what can you do? Don't turn it off. Oh, no more water. But that's, just, that's what they do here in the winter. Yeah. You got dry hydrant for a reason, because you don't want the water inside the hydrant. Uh-huh. So you drain. Most of those valves have a drain. Winter, you you, sh you shut it up and mud wall it, drain all the pipe, and you're good to go. I have an attic that has a bathroom and no heat. In January, I drain all the pipe, shut it off, and for the pipe with the U shape, you put antifreeze. Don't use car antifreeze because it's expensive and it's illegal. <laughs> use the army antifreeze. It's cheaper and it's meant for that. So you can put antifreeze in the pipes, or you can uh, evacuate the pipes if you're going to use them. So. Food for thought, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Water and ice corrosion, that's another issue. If you have if you have red nice woolly blanket to insulate you and suddenly it get full with, with water, it will start to corrode the nails in your wood and your in your uh, plywood. It will start to corrode the, the steel pipe, so it's going to be an issue. And then bacteria growth, we don't want that bacteria and fungus. How long is the video? 24 almost. Okay, 20. Okay, we'll, we'll turn around and we'll, we'll look at the other one. Alright, stop it.